Welcome back to another video, guys. I have today, 2013, um, Skoda Octavia. Octavia, it's 1.2 TSI. Um, not doing any engine repairs on this one today. What our problem actually is, I can maybe try and recreate it a slight little bit, but I can't do it in its entirety. Story with this was, chap contacted me, he had an airbag light on, and he said and told me he needed a clock spring. Um, he also furnished me with a part number, said it was five or 600 euros, and could I source one anyway cheaper? So what I've done was, I used his part number, I went onto eBay and stuff, and I got a clock spring. Now, that's where the fun starts. It arrived, and when it arrived, it was here, and the car came down to me, and I disassembled and went to reassemble the clock spring that I had got. Um, done a little bit of looking, it was scanned to that point in time to prove it gone, or something after happens to it. Ye know as well as I do, normally clock springs don't break unless there's a kind of a, a mistake on fitment, you know, if someone had the airbag off or changed a rack or turned the steering wheel or something along those lines, normally it's gonna get, well, see undue stress where it shouldn't have undue stress. So someone must have been in here, someone must have done something in here, but look, I'm told, no, there was no one in there, but the clock spring, when I disassembled, was snapped into two halves, so the actual, the ribbon running around the clock spring was broken clean off, close to the base where the clock spring was, and the clock spring that I had was wrong. Radio starting loud. The clock spring that I had was wrong. The part number that he had furnished me with was from a, he said he found it somewhere. So he wasn't, after seeing the actual part number of it, I just went, I looked up the part number, part number was for a Skoda, I ordered, and lo and behold, problem. So, what we done was, I took it apart, and after taking it apart, as I said, this ribbon was broken inside it. Okay, straightforward enough. We had an airbag light on our dash, and also what I had here was I couldn't control anything on the actual steering wheel. Now, I, after buying the part, Always the fella for going along and trying to find an answer where there's no answer. I don't like actually being defeated. The I disassembled the clock spring slightly. I disassembled the other clock spring slightly because of it being coming from somewhere queer on the internet. I said it was going to be hard to return and it was, yeah, I just didn't, I don't like that hardship and grief. So what I done was I disassembled the tube and I tried to make it fit. But luckily, not luckily, unluckily, the one in here had something like four ribbons or four wires running around the ribbon, if that makes sense. And the one that I had gotten had five. So it didn't really fit in very well, but I did. I nipped off one of the legs. I verified continuity between pins that were in the right same same place and stuff. And I put in the clock spring into it, a bit of a bodgery do job. But anyway, I went into it. And after I fitted it in, lo and behold, my airbag light, was gone off, but I still had no control for my steering wheel. So, um, at that point in time, once I'd seen it, I also took a part number at that stage from it, and from eBay, I actually got this, which, I don't think you can see it there. Five, can you see it? 5K0953569E. It's not really focusing very well. But anyway, that was the part number, and is the part number for what's in here. Now this is off a caddy, I think. Um, but we have a clock spring of the right part number at this point in time. I'm going to show you what we have. As I said, no control of the steering wheel. In here, we have control unit in steering wheel, no communication. Also, I have antenna two for radio open circuit. There's two areas, and these are in the mirrors. So there's where the two, it's going to be wire broken. Maybe a mirror is not the original mirror or something like that. Uh, other than that, I don't have a whole lot in here. I have central locking, overheating protection in electronic central, uh, electronic central electrics. Um, load management, haven't a clue, don't even want to know about that. After that, look, engine and all that stuff is all good. So all I'm chasing after is in theory that today. Now, I don't know what the story with these. Um, I have seen some of these where they can be awkward and I couldn't tell you I'm familiar with it. I'm going to, oh, everyone's going to be, quite simple and easy I do not know what I'm going to do I'm going to go in on this I'm going to try and see if in the steering column electronics I can get some maybe I don't know you know coding or take a screenshot of something 
to do with this and then we'll try switcheroo and when i do switcheroo i'm going to try and see i'm just going to plug and play and see what happens to start and then from there we'll roll on into the hardship if we get hardship from it okay so that's what we're going to today first thing airbag off steering wheel off uh plastic cowlings around the steering wheel off and roll on from there okay i get a i get a look in here and see what's involved in it and show you the thing. okay sorry before we go we're going to go enter steering column electronics Oop. into this and i'm just going to, try, going to try and see if i can get ecu information up here okay so there's the vag part number system design software coding software version don't know what wsc is or imp or device there's the actual part number that we i have ordered for it and got so that's kind of it there's all the information we're hoping we're going to need if we need to change anything I'm presuming we can change it. Have never done this before, so don't know what I'm going to be up against, okay? Gonna turn around and get this thing off of it and see where we end up. This bit I'm nearly doing kind of for my own information nearly. I'm just looking here, we have installed, not installed, active, not installed. So I'm, I'm able to run down and hopefully if I need to change anything here, I don't know, that should nearly naturally happen from the actual coding but what i'm actually recording now is what's in it and what's not okay and by the looks of here i can set new value if needs be so i'm i'm going to assume that yeah if, if i have something in the other car that's not in this car that i can actually change or to see here tiptronic but anyway that's that's what i'm just i'm just showing it just for the crack escape and right get this thing changed okay now. first thing i'm going to do is pop up that i'll probably unhook this old leather nappy at the back and then when we turn our steering wheel there's two little 25 torques sitting in there 20 is probably the most popular one and that will pull it out and i think there is another one there is another one sitting down in here we'll get off that cowling and then we'll go in about pulling off our airbag okay i hope this will be easy enough to see I'm trying to get a bit of light on it for you oh my light is doing that kind of weird crack okay sorry I'm, I'm moving I'm grabbing the scooter when you're looking in there it's relatively you're not looking at it relatively easy you got the airbag flat screwdriver opening and a push like that that's one of them gone spin them all the way around come on one at each side when I'm lined upside down with the power steering not working it's a little bit awkward I'll get my flat screw over again okay I've gone too far there we go I'm looking at the pin there out on the camera guys sorry come on my baby not yeah, there we go. Not as easy when you're looking at a camera or an airbag. When you're looking at a camera rather than looking at what you're actually physically doing. Okay, we're back up here. And around we go. Okay, should. Uh, do we have a third one? We do, we must have a third one. I didn't see it, but I must have a third clip, okay? I just thought it was going to be nice and easy. You probably don't want to go watching this crack. I'll pull it off there. And pop okay, I didn't have a third one. Just one of my clips was after snagging on again um sign the thing two block connectors one is actually for control unit steering wheel control unit and the same over here so i'm assuming we'll just pop that we'll have with one hand it's just a little lock connector there oh, no won't get it one hand won't get it one hand i'm gonna get a screwdriver though and i'm gonna pop out this little one Oop. come on no, that actually didn't come out very well right we're out some bit we'll try and get this thing come on no i'm gonna have to drop the camera and get my second hand going again okay pop that off <clears throat> airbag thrown down here beside us now look i have never had any issues with airbags going off or any of that crack but i'm not telling you to do this you can you know disconnect your batteries outside and 
maybe leave the system shut down and give it a half an hour, 40 minutes or any of that crack um, to go to sleep and all that stuff. I just, I've never had any issues. I'd um, popping them off and popping them on and never any bother. Anyway, I'm saying that quietly because I don't want anyone to get, yeah. Yeah, you do this and you do that. What I'm doing is not to influence what you're doing. This is just what I'm doing and I'm showing you what I'm doing. Anyway, what we're going to do right now anyway is pull off our steering wheel. I'm going to make sure that my steering wheel is straight or at least relatively close to straight. There is a little dot punch mark right there and it'll be on the steering column as well once we pull off this nut. And... Yeah. Okay. That's that. Off steering wheel. You can actually see the little markings there that line up relatively. They don't be actually bang on. It'd be good getting bang on. The teeth are very, very small, but oh, I don't, I well, get it as accurate as you can, okay? Steering wheel comes off straightforward, simple. She's going down here with her, some of her bits and pieces. And now I'm going to have to try and figure out how this clock spring comes off. I do not know. What I do and I find very handy for me is I look at my old parts, not not the old parts, sorry, the new parts, and I see what's involved and where some clips or clasps are. What I can see here is maybe there's going to be little clips or legs in here that have to be pushed out. I'm hoping that this is all going to pop apart relatively easy. Um, yeah, this is where I done my, I had to do a doctor and job look, which is pure messing before, but anyway, I was trying to see if it worked. And it, uh, again, in here, to change that little clock that little ribbon that was inside it but it, it was just pure being silly anyway here we are with the right one now we're going in and going to try and figure out what's holding this on and do the switch through this is a really easy disassembly process lads there's them two little things i spoke about look there's two little tabs that push down out of the gap that i showed you on the other one one on that side one on if you can see it there on that side and then I'm going to give another little look on the very, very bottom. There's a little tab there. So that's actually going upside down, okay? On the very bottom, all I done was put up a little screwdriver. If we can see in there and just give a little little tug. And this thing is, is starting to come, come off. So it's very, very easy to disassemble this thing anyway, by the looks of it. Okay. Oh, nice. Is there more to this thing? Well, I have more wires here connected to them. Okay. Okay, a little block connector. Down there, you saw how easy those block connectors came off. Okay, that was nice. And simple there, I say. We should be all ready for go back together, I'm assuming. What I am going to do in my... I'm going to, I'm going to take off that tie clip. The presumption is the steering wheel, the wheels are straight, okay? So if you can see... My wheels are straight, and my presumption is that this one was disassembled in the straight position. If it wasn't, I'm going to snip that. I'm going to make sure I get about two turns that way nice and gently, two turns back to centre, and then two turns anti-clockwise nice and gently, and then back to centre again, okay, if that makes sense. All I'm going to do is just make sure that this thing is going to come apart and go together, okay. Okay, old clock spring off, new clock spring being offered up. That's it, it seems to have gone in. Yeah, my clips are in there and there. I'm assuming the underneath one is okay. All feels relatively good and okay. Um, I did. I did see that, that yoke came off of there. What else did we have? And this little, this is the airbag. Generally airbag wires are gonna be, our block connectors are gonna be kind of a what do we call it? Yellow in colour, generally. Okay. That all seems to have gone together nice and easy. We're going to do our, our two little rotations and just see, okay? I have tried that block connector onto that just to make sure it's correct. I've done an examination on it to make sure everything looks the part, and it does. So we're going to go one, two, it seems good. One, two, back to the centre. One, two, that seemed okay. One, two, back to the center. I'm happy enough to refit this at this point in time. I didn't see any pressure on my uh, clock spring while spinning. 
So due to that, I could look at live data, uh, but I don't want to turn on keys or anything at this point in time, just when I have things disassembled. I could, absolutely I could. Um, maybe I might put on my steering wheel. I might put on my steering wheel and pop on my airbag next. I'm only just leaving the car without faults, just while working. I could leave all these open circuit, but I want to leave it without faults, try and see can I get rid of faults, and will the controls on the steering wheel start to work? Now, I haven't verified too much that the actual controls on the steering wheel are good, but the clock spring in that old one, and that was broken clean off. So I'm presuming and making what we have in here that's bad, good, and then from there we'll move forward, fix whatever we have to fix. All right, so I'll stick on the steering wheel and the airbag and see what happens. We'll clear a few faults and go from there. Okay, bolt in and torqued. block connector for the airbag push the block connector in and then in the little locking tab up the top and I did I connected that off camera so I'm going to leave I'm going to leave this stuff just hanging there for the time being and I'm going to put things together actually one visit one what would we call it one audible thing that didn't work as well as the horn the beep beep horn wasn't working so we're uh We'll get in, we'll clear a few faults and see will our horn and stuff start to work. Okay, tidied up my wires. Whoop, I'm the losing the key. Tidied up my wires in underneath the actual airbag. Just put them all back into place. Time to put in the key. And the key. Okay, we'll go for our first test, will we? Okay. Whoa! Some music. Whatever that music is, I haven't a clue. Um, okay, right, well, we're we're doing something. What's happening here? So that's maybe all to do with instrument cluster or something here, but we are, we're back working. We're changing channels. We're doing... Yay. And our horn is working. Don't know. We'll get in and we'll see how we got. We're going to have to have short communication at this point in time. Again, will we... Okay. So that's it. That was maybe simple enough. Am I gonna am I gonna be able to am I gonna be able to just clear faults, plug and play? Radio gone quite while it's scanning. I didn't even clear those. She's at. Uh, oh, it's at the radio. 12 pack now 1988. I'm assuming FM AM 56 is going to be a radio or something. Slow on doing whatever it's meant to be doing there now. I'm just assuming it's not fitted, so maybe it's not the radio. Okay, so that's it. We're going to. We'll quick erase and just see, right? That one still has a fault in there. Navigation system, I don't know. I don't actually know what that one is. Electronic. Let's turn on that radio. Double codes. Load management intervention. I'm just going to, uh, in theory, ignore that. Why? Because it's nothing to do with me at this point in time. I think we're going to be going. Look, I'm going to start this thing. I'll run it. I'll give it a drive and I'll just make sure everything, everything is doing exactly what it should do. Time chain is rattling like crazy in this thing. Um, airbag light still gone. Ball coat's gone. We'll give it a drive and just see how these things are going to be gone away. But that actually was so far easy. I still have the plastic curling here to put on that simple little number of a job. But that seems to have worked out very, very handy from my eBay part. Okay, guys. I have the plastic curling and stuff put on. I'm just at the verifying that my indicators work that when i turn on my heads and dims work i'm at the verifying that the screen screen washer and wipers and blah blah work so at this stage it looks like everything works in it the man's complaint was that he couldn't control control the radio who broke it how it broke don't know don't mind i could probably go in and start hunting down difficulties here some of you that are more familiar than me with kind of it goes into nearly dealer level you know vcds have vcds there 
I'm going to tell you it's a laptop and normally when I grab it the battery is flat and just this Autel is there and look I probably can do everything on Autel that the VCDS or, or most of it that the VCDS team can do but I'm not going to go looking pro- 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 for problems right now I'm just calling this fix his complaint is done everything that I can see working is working I have to drive it home with me tonight bring it back to him and make sure the cruise control is working at that point and I have time going up the road but that's it simple and easy isn't this a lovely trade when stuff works out as you see from me 90% of the time stuff will go wrong or go somewhere that it shouldn't be going you're like and you're losing time because the best laid plans have to for me and for ye have a time frame involved in them and generally if you give a customer hey there's 2,000 euros of work to be done on a car and then it goes kind of wrong and the time starts adding up it's not the nicest thing being the man on the blower and saying look this has gone wrong that's gone wrong it's going to cost you more here more there more time time is money uh, so when you get an odd one like this that actually just works out isn't it a big thumbs up for our motor trade whippy do nice fast easy and look the long and short of it I wasn't I'm not I wasn't going to be getting a huge amount of money for all this silly and that I was doing previously so there's where I was yeah wasting time probably spent an hour maybe even an hour and a half far at arse around with that thing previously just to try and make it go away anyway neither here or there that's it for this one guys I don't know clock spring on a 2013 Skoda Octavia ribbon broken uh, if any of my hints and tips are any good to you guys please like and subscribe and yeah I don't know what am I going to do I'm just going to say see you all in the next cartoon Peter Kennedy Signing out. Thanks, boys. Thanks for watching.